Hi everyone and welcome back to the 300 bird challenge. We're trying to see 300 different bird species this year. We're currently in the North Bay area. Stay tuned, we'll be back in a second and I'll tell you a bit more about our weekend plans. Okay everyone, welcome back. It is currently the August Civic Holiday Long Weekend, so we're going to make a good time of it, hopefully. Our plan is to go to Martin River Provincial Park, which is a place we visited many years ago and quite enjoyed. We're going to camp there this time. Last time it was just a day trip. Anyway, we're on our way there. We stayed in North Bay overnight to get us kind of part way there. We're currently walking a trail called... Laurier Woods Conservation Area. And it's quite a hectic area at the moment. We're hearing lots of red-eyed vireos, which is a bird that I have struggled to get on camera in the past, but there's so many of them, I think we're going to get it this time. We're also hearing lots of other birds, American goldfinch, seeing lots of robins and other things. Stay tuned, we're going to look around the beginning of this trail here and see what else we can find. Laurier Woods Conservation Area is just outside of North Bay itself, about a four-hour drive north of Toronto. As I mentioned, we stayed in North Bay overnight with plans to travel further north after this stop. Uh, today people have seen rough grouse, kingfisher, flicker, pileated, least flycatcher, warbling and red-eyed vireos, blue jay, crow, raven, chickadee, red-breasted nuthatch, hatch, golden crown kinglet, viri, that's what we need, hermit thrush, robin, catbird, brown thrasher, stalling. So of the birds on that board, roughed grouse would be very nice and veery. We haven't seen those yet this year, so let's go take a look down this trail. A lot of the action took place near the start of the trail in this wood dominated by birch. Red-eyed vireos were really out in force today. A couple of pairs of red starts and really nice views of this rose-breasted grosbeak. I think that this is an immature male because of that little red line of coloration on the upper edge of the wing, but maybe it's female. Let me know what you think in the comments. Alright Chippy. A little further into the trail, this pond. Not much happening on it. But it was surrounded by purple loosestrife, a highly invasive plant introduced from Eurasia, quite pretty, but not native. A few pollinators were making good use of it though. Back into the woods on a looping trail. We passed through some marshland and we're back into the woods again now, but things have quietened down. We're hearing distant crows and some black capped chickadees up in the canopy, so I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you that we have been birding a couple of times in the summer, but it has otherwise been fairly quiet. We did take one small trip to Colonel Sam Smith Park on the outskirts of Toronto, and we went there primarily to look at redneck grebe chicks, and we got some pretty nice views of those, so I'll show you that, and I'll tell you about another bird that's new for the year that we also saw while we were there. We'll be back from that in a second. Stay tuned. Our brief visit to Colonel Sam Smith Park wasn't really worthy of a video all of its own, but we did get a decent look at these red-necked grebe chicks that had recently taken to the water. Although maybe they weren't quite ready yet to take on such a huge meal as this. Red-necked grebes have been breeding at Colonel Sam Smith Park for a number of years now, but last year, 2023, was not very successful for them. As far as I know, all of their nests failed. So it was nice to see this family doing well, and I was pleased to get a shot of a chick riding on the back of its parent. Now while we were at the park, although I didn't get a video, I did get a shot of this bird, 
a common term. It's a new bird for the year. They show up here in the warmer months, once the fishing is good. Before we go on, we did take another kind of secret trip. We went looking for a super rare bird in Ontario, the Kirtland's Warbler. So I can't say exactly where we went, but a few friends of the channel came with us. But I think we were too late in the year to see the Kirtlands. I'll make a proper video about this next summer. While we were there though, we caught sight of this Vesper Sparrow, quite distant, but we were able to also get an ID from its call. Okay, back to Laurier Woods. The bulk of the woods were pretty quiet, but towards the end of the trail was this marsh. Now, not much to report from here either, but for a couple of wood ducks, and a few turtles that were too far out to get a reliable ID, probably painted turtles. Spotted tussock moth adults fly from around May to July, with the larva, like this one, appearing around July to September. They overwinter in an oval-shaped, hairy-looking cocoon. We saw this small American toad too. There's only two species of toad in Ontario, this one, and the much rarer Fowler's toad, which is found only in the southwest. One last bird as we were leaving. The female chestnut-sided warbler lacks the chestnut sides, but it has that golden colour running all the way up her back to her crown. Okay everyone, that trail loops around and we've come back to the beginning again. As is sometimes the case, most of the activity was happening in the first few hundred yards of the trail. We did get to see a chestnut warbler as well. Unfortunately, no roofed grouse and no veery. We heard the veery though, we just couldn't get eyes on it. We hung around for a little bit, but it never really came out for us. Heard it maybe two or three times and then it went quiet again. No new birds, but we got good looks at a few different species. It's now time for us to do a few errands. We need to get some groceries and we need to head to our campsite. So this seems like a pretty good spot to take a break. We'll be back in a little while after this. We arrived at Martin River and set up camp and had dinner. We'll go birding in the morning, but for now, Martin River Provincial Park is a bit less than maybe an hour further north from North Bay. There's lots of campsites, a river with some beach space, and a few trails of various lengths, sharing the same trailhead as shown here on this map. We did the medium length trail shown here with the orange cut through. When we first entered the woods, like the amateur I am, my camera shutter speed wasn't set up correctly for how dark it was in these woods at 7.30 in the morning, but we did see several magnolia warblers. I did get this very brief shot once I'd sorted out my settings. And a Nashville warbler, but it didn't stick around too long. Once spring is over, these warblers get tougher to ID. This is a faded looking bay breasted warbler. Here's a bird I've only ever seen a few times, but I really like it. Unfortunately, this one is very worn looking. It's a new bird though, blue headed vireo. It began to quieten down as we progressed along the trail, but here's a bird that's easy to identify at any time of year, a yellow bellied sapsucker. And another toad. Having developed from tadpoles, these American toads begin to emerge from the water as soon as the ice retreats, pretty much, but their activity peaks in kind of July, August in Ontario. We continued on, things getting really quiet for a while. Well, I think the trail's starting to turn back towards the beginning again, and we don't have a roofed grouse. It's not do or die, but it would be cool to find it. We do have a couple of other trips into the north where we hope we might be able to find one. Um, it's been pretty quiet generally. Occasionally a kind of group of birds will pass through all at the same time. And those groups tend to include uh, chickadees we're hearing. We heard a distant wood thrush, uh, brown creeper. We think there's some kinglets mixed in there. We have caught a few warblers on camera and there's also uh, a ton of red-eyed vireos which we've already seen at a previous stop. So we'll keep going along the trail and if anything else crops up, we'll be sure to show you. Stay tuned.
Eventually, a brown creeper turned up to give us a little bit of hope. Struggled to get a good shot of this oven bird, hiding in the undergrowth as they do before it flew away. That was about it for the trail, time to head home, but we did decide to make a stop on the way back. Good morning everyone, it's the next day. We finished the trail yesterday, spent the afternoon relaxing at the campsite. We've decided to cut our losses on those northern birds, the rough grouse as I mentioned, and on the way back we've stopped at a favourite place of ours that we hadn't gotten to so far this year. Hopefully it's not too late in the year, but we are at... Cardin Elbow unique area of prairie. We're hoping to pick up perhaps snipe, um, maybe grasshopper, sparrow. Upland sandpiper. And upland sand sandpiper would be awesome actually. We haven't seen one of those for a long time. We didn't get it last year. Maybe this year we will. It's going to be mostly driving up and down a road, taking in the views either side of the vehicle. We're going to kind of dash through a couple of times and see what we can pick up. So let's go take a look. Carden Alvar Provincial Park is an unmanaged park, essentially a collection of side roads north of Kirkfield, as well as a couple of trails. The area is a prairie with thin top soil, and it's a good spot to pick up prairie and grassland species, though perhaps a little bit earlier in the year than we're visiting. We began by driving along Wiley Road next to the Bluebird Ranch. The first bird we saw was this goldfinch. And perhaps the most frequently spotted bird today were eastern kingbirds. Carden is usually a good spot to see bluebirds, usually a bit closer than this one. Hey, stay tuned to the channel for maybe like another year, and we'll go back in the summer in 2025 when the views are better here. A slightly oddly positioned killdeer on top of this fence. And a pretty handsome looking kestrel. We actually got into a bit of a quandary. There'd been heavy rain over the weekend and the road was flooded. Much worse than this puddle that I'm showing you here actually in places. Carden Alvar is hard on a front wheel drive hatchback car at the best of times, but we had to turn back from the flooding. There's a trail called the Sage Ren Marsh Trail, but as you can see, it was hopelessly overgrown. Despite that, we did see a Lincoln Sparrow, and several Song Sparrows too, and a Brown Thrasher chilling out on the edge of a shrub. Okay, we've driven up the road about as far as we can because it starts to get flooded after a marsh and we've turned back, we're gonna continue down the road behind me shortly. Still no upland sandpiper, but we'll try on our way back. Uh, as we went through the marsh, it's quite a narrow road and a truck was coming the other way. And as that pass happened, something ran out across the road and I'm 95% sure it was a Virginia rail. I didn't get it on camera. It would be a first for the year. It would be a new bird, but I'm not sure. Didn't get it on camera. The only doubt I have is whether it was maybe a Sora, because my view was very fleeting. But pretty sure it was a Virginia rail. Ah! Um, we did just go for a quick walk. There's the Sage Wren Marsh walking trail just off camera here. Um, we heard a few things, didn't get them on camera. Uh, White-breasted nuthatch, lots of catbirds. We did get a brown thrasher on camera and also uh, some kind of sparrow, a bit too far away for me to be sure. Swamp? Song? One of those two, I think. Um, we've had luck on that trail in the past with some larger animals. Believe it or not, just up the road from here we've seen a black bear before, and we have seen a moose somewhere around here too. We thought we were in luck, we heard rustling sounds near a tree, and it was a little bit overgrown, but as we came around it was just a red squirrel tossing pine, can pine cones down out of a tree. Anyway, the road behind me leads back to where we started, we're going to continue down there and see if maybe we can find an upland sandpiper or some other new bird and we maybe will do a bit more walking somewhere else nearby too so stay tuned for that let's get back in the car and back down that road moving on new bird at distance bobo link it took us a second as we'd only ever seen breeding males before these bobo link have non-breeding plumage or perhaps they're all female 
Here's a slightly closer look. Distant again, Eastern Meadowlark. As I said, I'll try and do a Cardinal Var video next summer when the views will be much, much better than this. Normally, you can almost touch the birds. We moved on to the nearby Cameron Ranch walking trail in the hope of picking up one of our target species. What can we expect here? Well, we've seen snipe here in the past, not hearing any today. Uh, grasshopper sparrow still need that. Um, and we still want the upland sandpiper, of course, it's possible that we might get it here. This is where we've seen it in the past. Um, just a kind of prairie trail here. Let's see what we can find along here. July and August are some of the more austere months for birding in Ontario, so again, it was fairly quiet here. Birding for shorebirds is generally more fruitful at this time of the year, but we're not really near the shore. We persevered anyway. A few butterflies flitting around, but can we find any birds? Join us after a quick break. Okay, we're turning back on account of it being pretty quiet. Um, we're occasionally seeing sparrows in the distance flying in and out of these shrubs that are kind of dotted al along the trail. I think they're mostly song sparrow. Sometimes it's hard for us to tell when they're far away, but we'll keep looking. Amongst the flowering plants were a few butterflies and moths, like the black swallowtail from before the break, and a few pole crescents like this. And this species is a type of dusky wing, but I'm not sure which. There's four or five different dusky wing species found in southern Ontario. Wild indigo dusky wing is one of the more common species, but I'm not sure. Suddenly, we saw this sparrow. Okay guys, those sparrows that have been jumping from bush to bush, we finally got a good look at one, and it's a grasshopper sparrow, new bird for the year, we finally found something in our quest towards 300 on this trip. Phew, thank goodness for that. We're gonna carry on along the trail, if we see anything else we'll be sure to show it to you, stay tuned. This sparrow can be hard to spot in its kind of unremarkableness and tendency to hide in grassland. It has a kind of tan buffy coloration on the breast, yellow at the laws, and its head looks kind of flat at the top when its feathers aren't puffed up. We're outside of mating season now, so this bird only calls rather than sings, so we were hearing its very short, high-pitched ticking call. We decided to return to the car and drive a few more of the nearby roads before we finished up. Along the roadside we saw an eastern Phoebe, and yet another grassland species sparrow, this one is a savannah sparrow. Savannah. Compared to the grasshopper sparrow, it has a rounder head, more evenly and neatly streaked chest, it's slightly larger, and it has a little bit of black colouring on the beak, which is also proportionally smaller than the grasshopper's quite large beak. And that was about all we had time for. Okay guys, I think we're out of time, we need to get home. We've covered a wide area in this video, hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to the channel. We have leads on two or three species a bit closer to home for the next video. Hopefully we can sneak out after work one day during this week or next. That video coming soon. It's getting a bit tight, isn't it? We only have a few more birds to go, but it is coming up to the end of summer and some species are starting to leave and we haven't seen them yet. Stay tuned to see if we can find them. As I say, thanks for watching this video. Please hit the like button, leave us a comment, and most of all, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, you'll get notifications for new videos. Thanks for watching, happy birding, and bye for now. Bye.